to follow on Twitch on my cellular and yay yay what, hey. what's good yeah we got the humanity first right there got my math hat good and the hood yeah and the, hood, and the hoodie yeah I know my uh my, my t-shirt underneath this it's humanity forward so yeah hey. in there it is us the melanated council of yang we are in this bad boy Black History Month coming at you live. Woo. Yes, and so we we got a, a a nice little topic for for you guys tonight. And I think later on, what I might end up doing is <clears throat> we're gonna do some trivia. So later oh. on, yeah, okay, yes, well. yes. I was um, I don't know. It, it was either my sister in law. Or my grandmother, somebody, they they had a a a deck of like black fat cards that I have in my game drawer. And okay. so I might end up using those this week and start treat start start tweeting out some trivia. So you guys stay tuned for that. Okay, dope. Yeah. Stay tuned for that. That's okay. So that's that part. But what we're gonna get into in in this moment of time, discover, I don't care, is we are going to be talking about modern figures. Modern figures. We're talking about modern figures. And hey Blake, what's happening? Hey. Hey. What's hey. Up? You got first. And so we're going to be discussing modern figures, but also we're going to be highlighting those people that are out there making history as we speak right now. And we're going to highlight those people and give them their flowers while they're still living and give them credit where credit is due while they're still living. And I mean, it's still, we could, you know, still honor the past. The people who just recently passed away and whatnot is again still give them their flowers, still give them their just dues because they made history in their own right. So, as we get started, Toby, M, you guys can pick whoever you want to go first and whatnot. But who would be a figure? Oh, yeah, boom, Toby. Oh, wait, oh, I thought that you were trying to raise your hand. I got <laughs> I got voluntold. What is going on? Um, <laughs> yeah. We're going to get this thing out figured out. So, Toby here. We're going to start with you. All right. So, Name one figure you would like to talk about for the next five minutes. Go. All right. So, I mean, I have no choice <laughs> but to, to start here because I've mentioned him before. So, I might as well really really talk about him and i'm actually going to see if i can find a little picture but i went to because those who know me know but for those who don't really university of maryland baltimore county umbc for my undergraduate yeah. school yeah. founded retrievers. in 1966 yes retrievers is 1966 relatively new school literally people who went in the first graduating class some of them are still alive which is kind of wild since most universities are like founded in the 18 or 1700s and they've been long dead. Now for us, we, uh, the guy I'm gonna talk about, Dr. Freeman A. Rabowski III, he's the second president of the school. Still kicking, still strong. Um, this man has such a, just like, a, I, it's not like a trial and tribulation, but he went through some stuff in his early, his early days. And now he's out here as a PhD and university president. He was in like time. He had, he had a 60 minute interview and oh, nice. two TED talks. And I think he was like in the time 100 influential. And he was definitely among like top university presidents in some ranking, but he also has been on Time Magazine. And so this man, and he was also like an advisor to President Obama and all this other stuff in terms of science and technology. So he was a PhD, I believe in higher education, did a degree in math in undergrad. Um, he marched in the Children's March, you know, back in the 1960s. He was to jail as like a 12 or 13 year old. Um, watch the TED Talk, and he is it's really good. It's really interesting to hear him talk. Um, but he is a modern figure because I mean, he raised UMBC's profile like 
in many, mostly in academic respects, but he, other schools know that we're a serious school um, because of different programs that he helped create and pioneer and like support with especially helping underrepresented minorities. You have, you have black people, you have Latinos, you have Native Americans, other groups, really underrepresented in science and engineering. So it was really usually Latinos, black, and his um, Native American, but he was helping to foster growth and get these people to do PhDs in STEM fields, MD, PhDs, and PhDs. In particular, the program that I was involved in, the Meyerhoff Scholars Program. And that's not to toot my own horn too much, but like this man, I'm going to see if I can pull him up. <clears throat> hey. Hey. hey! Hey! He was in the best 10 college presidents in Time Magazine. Wow. And let me see what year this was. I can't see the year for this publication, but um, let me actually click the original article. The article was November 11th, 2009. So that was my shoot, <laughs> 10th grade. I was not even in college at the time, but still, like, this man, excuse me, was doing a lot. And so I'm actually just doing a quick Google search. He's on <laughs> the historymakers.org. There was something talking about how, you know, he was born. So he was born in Birmingham. I actually didn't know that that was where he's from. So that's pretty iconic because, of course, Martin Luther King was in jail and you know, letter from a Birmingham jail. And there's just a lot of history from there, the black churches. Um, so he was born there. He was in the movement. He Looking at some of the fast facts, he had got his BA in mathematics, and I know he did that like early against all the odds. He went to University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign, which is a great school. Um, for reference, computer science program is like ranked number five. Hey, Mel Hank, what's going on? And then he got that PhD in higher education. Um, so yeah, he did all these things and. He's involved in a lot of, he's like, I guess he's in the American Association of Colleges and Universities. I can't see it here, but I know that he definitely was an advisor at one point um, to the president. So, Freeman A. Rabowski III. He's a, a, he's a great man. I'm going to see if I can drop a link. There you go. <laughs> drop, a, drop the link in the chat and fire it away. Because I know uh, <clears throat> StreamYard, they just did it. They just did a, a whole new update and whatnot. So that'd be good. Wait, what do you mean like um, an update with? Oh yeah, like we can. I like know. yeah. So just a little side note, StreamYard, they have you know how we we try to do like a file share. And whatnot, and it kind of like sucks every now and then. <laughs> well, StreamYard just added a feature where we can share videos and whatnot and not have it all looking silly and crappy and unprofessional. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So shout out to StreamYard. You guys are doing the thing in the modern technology age. So kudos to you guys. Woo -woo. And so while Toby, while you're getting that link together, Elle, you want to go next? Yeah. You know, I was trying to think of, you know, like some modern figures. And, you know, like the first that came to mind was Stacey Abrams. There you go. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's pretty much Captain America. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, talk, talk, talk your stuff about Stacey Abrams. Let, let, let the people know okay. about Stacey. Go for well, it. Like, well, we, you know, you know, pretty much like what we know about Stacey Abrams is like, she is why we have a majority in the, well, the Democrats have a majority in the Senate um, because of, you know, like the whole fair, what was it like fair fight act, mm -hmm. uh, action or something? Yeah. I can't mm -hmm. remember the name of it. Um, she was able to turn Georgia blue, which helped Joe Biden become, you know, the president of the United States. And yeah, sorry, I'm drawing a blank. 
You're good. Quite unprepared, but uh, I was also thinking of Angela Davis as well. She's still alive. So yeah, she's still modern. She's 77, still kicking. Um, she's, I feel like a little, like, especially back in the day, she was like a little bit more radical. Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, but I remember I saw like, I went to go see her speak once at, at, a, at a local college a couple of years ago. And I remember she was, you know, always advocating for, you know, like um, <clears throat> prison reform and, and like even back then, which was probably like the sixties, there was two, like she was like saying, you know, protesting, there are 200,000 people in prison. And like back then that was a lot of people, mm. and, you know, she's been, <clears throat> advocating for it and fighting against it ever since and now there's probably like i don't know how many people are in prison like millions now which is sad and upsetting mm -hmm. but and i know that she wasn't officially a part of the black panther party but i think she was kind of like heavily um affiliated with them a lot so uh, like, i think it was pretty badass oh yeah but yeah oh yeah kudos to angela davis Mm -hmm. And also kudos to Stacey Abrams and kudos to Dr. Lebowski, the third over at UMBC. And I, I think the one person that comes to mind when we think about modern figures, I, I look at um, Dr. Jermaine Johnson. Mm -hmm. I look at him and being one of the, the first Yang gang members or be that 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 freshman crew of Yang gang members that got voted into Congress, whether it was on a national level or state level, because I know he won his state level seat and he's doing a awesome work. And if you guys don't know who this gentleman is, I'm just share just a little tidbit for you. Jermaine Johnson, he was one of those that grew up in the hood. Like we're gonna call it spade a spade. He grew up in the hood, mm -hmm. and of course he 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 didn't have like the worst life, but at the same time it wasn't like the super best. But he made it work. I mean, yes, of course he got in trouble here and there and everything else. And it wasn't until like he went to college and he just kind of like wanted to get his life on track. That's when a lot of things started clicking for him. And so, of course, he helped spearhead the, the South Carolina Yang gang down there, you know, brought Andrew Yang down there and spoke, got him connected with a lot of volunteers, a lot of people down there just to help get his name recognition out there. And even, and even still then, it was like he knew that there was still work to be done. And so with him, he became, like I said, he became one of, one of the first of the candidates that Andrew Yang endorsed. Mm. And out the ones that Andrew Yang endorsed, again, like I said, Jermaine Johnson, he is one of those few that won his seat. So kudos to him down in South Carolina. So the folks living down in South Carolina, viewers watching, in South Carolina. I'm going to let y'all know this man is about to hook y'all up something serious. Mm -hmm. This man is about to hook y'all up something serious. Like, I have no clue what he's got going on. So, he's working out this this this, this thing called the Palomato Fund. Basically, something like what um, Alaska has for their um, their dividend. And so, basically, it's, it's going to be a way where South Carolinas, the people that live in South Carolina, where they get some cheddar to be able to kind of help them with the day-to-day -day lives and everything else. And so he's ironing that out. He's working out the fine kinks. But also at the same time, he's also pushing for policies on a state level to make sure the folks in Carolina, South Carolina, are getting taken care of and making sure that the people that... Um, helped him get in the office that, no, I'm not just going to leave you high and dry. Like, I'm going to come back to my community because had my community not believed in me, not believed in my message, I would not be in the position that I'm in today. And so the guy is a good guy and he's making flashes, he's making waves and he's he's pretty much like listening to his story. It's like, 
wow, like really? So that's one of the modern figures that I'm going to bring about. And again, you know, he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. You know, all uh, like I admire him from where he grew up and I admire his drive. I admire what he did to get to where he's at and to be able to, hey, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of, Speaking hey. of that, <laughs> state oh, in South Carolina, right there. Yes. That man right there. Yes. I he's from Beetlejuice. <laughs> 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 okay. Yes. We support you too. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah, no. No. Periscope. But Periscope is, is still around. It, it, it hasn't fully ended. So, yes, we're still on Periscope, but slow. I don't know when this year it's supposed to merge over to um, Twitter. Twitter. It's supposed to merge. It's supposed to merge yeah. over to Twitter. But since it's still available, we're going to keep on using it until it ro- until until it falls off. But even then, you know, we're still going to probably get a link to the point where we can stream it. On Twitter, but even still, it still works out. So yes. Do you know if like Twitter bought Periscope or something? Yeah, Twitter has been on Periscope. I'm pretty sure for a while. Um, let me look up the actual. It was acquired. Um, when did it say it was acquired by Twitter before launch? Okay, so te- so it was. Okay, I guess from the very beginning in 2015. Mm-hmm. Oh, so Twitter always owned Periscope, though. Yeah, so I guess when the idea was a thing, it was not like Periscope. It was not under Twitter 2013, but then by mm-hmm. the time it launched, Twitter had already went ahead and scoop. I mean, it's a good platform. It's a good platform. It's like global. You yeah, know? I've never, it, I've never it personally has, really used it much. It has, a global, it has a global audience. You know, like people post on there like every so often. I know um, Mindful Skeptics, he does a lot of shows through, he does a lot of his stuff through, through Periscope as well. Oh. Yeah. Mm, wow. Yeah. So that's a little tidbit. But yeah, we support you. Dr. Jermaine Johnson, thank you for stopping in and stopping by. It's, it's yeah. always a good pleasure again. If you live in South Carolina, get hooked up with this man and see what you can do to help that man out. Please. Facts. Facts. Do that. (laughs) Do that. Big facts. Yes. Bam. He's saying please. So if y'all can can help out Dr. Jermaine Johnson, matter of fact, hold on. Can't even say that. State Representative Jermaine Johnson, help that man out. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please help that man out. Okay. That's the first way. Who else? Who else do you guys who who else do you guys think it would be a, a good modern figure to kind of like talk about? Because I mean, we, we see a lot of people are still making history in the making and whatnot. And so who's another person that you guys can think about? That we need to you know, like not necessarily oh well yeah honor, but at this but at the same time like you know highlight. Um. Also, my link decided not to post. Um. I guess you can't post links there. Ooh. Well, y'all doing that. I. Am going to highlight the Mamba, the man himself, mm-hmm. Kobe Bryant. And okay. and even though and even though yes, it's like a, a year has passed, doesn't even feel like a year has passed mm-hmm. since his passing. But I, I think what Kobe Bryant did, um, yep. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what was that? 
Okay, I got scared. I was like, what did I have open? Okay. Yeah, no, I was, I was looking up something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Kobe Bryant, I mean, he came in the league when, like, what, out of high school, if that? Yeah. You know, he's been, he's been playing for the Lakers ever since his career and whatnot. And, and yeah, you know, he done won, what, three, four championships, maybe maybe five, maybe five. I know four for sure with the Lakers. I know two of which with with him and Shaq as a, as a duo. And then he was like, you know, we're gonna still win one without really having a big guy. And of course, he did it and everything else. But the the man has been a monster on the court. But even still, when he when he's like traveling overseas. And whatnot, he has a lot of respect because a lot of players they look up to him. They look at like his skills and and what he can do. And I mean, he's overall my, minus like the bad stuff. Like overall, he's a positive dude. Positive dude. He loves his loves his girls. Oh, loves his family to 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 the moon and back. And very supportive of of his daughter playing ball. You know, and even then, what which was scary was. His daughter had the same resemblance of old Kobe when he was when he was like what two three years mm. in the league. Like he like she showed that that same you know attack mode that that same tenacity to to go to the to the to the three point line and and like spark up from there or even then drive it in if if she got an open chance to do that like you saw a lot of the similarities that she was showing that Kobe, like, yeah, we can see Kobe. We see Kobe. We see Kobe. We see Kobe. You know, and again, he he was one of those guys where it's like, you knew that no matter what happened, he would do the best he could to put his team on his back, to make that extra shot count, to to make that extra play go, to do whatever it was needed to win. You know, and even even if you know they lost, at least they tried. At least he tried to be like, you know, look, we're gonna try to cut this loss, not something super big, but we're gonna do what we can. You know, and, and I think when he was still playing, that a lot of his teammates respected him. I mean, the the city of LA respected him. The city of LA loved him. You know, it was like to them that was their Michael Jordan. You know, that was their their person who they looked up to, and be like, you know, it doesn't matter if Kobe is number eight or twenty four. Like, we're gonna still rock that Brian jersey, and we're gonna still rock them shoes, and, and be like Kobe because that's who he was. That's who he was. And, and again, the guy was a beast. The guy was a beast. You, you can't argue against that. He was a he was a, a beast, and so modern figure for for those that are like in the in the basketball and whatnot. Like that's probably one guy. Um, if you had to watch over and over again and still get goosebumps, yeah, that's my guy. Mm. Oh, I think I read about her. Um the last week or a few weeks ago um yeah she yep 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 because of the whole 1619 1619 project and she did she win uh i know she won some award wow we love you too amy macarthur fellowship <laughs> thank you you as well thank you you are awesome Thank you. And, and forget for the chat, the same thing goes to you for you guys as well, you know, because we talk, we participate with the chat. You know, if there's a, a, a figure that you want to honor for the month for, for Black History Month, drop that person's name in there so we can blow it up. We can honor that person too as well. Because again, we, we only know, we don't know everybody. Right. And so we reach out to everybody else like, you know, hey, if you know somebody for Black History Month, Boom, put them in there. What was their contribution? What they do? So, um, 
So I want to talk about the, I mean, I guess when you heard the music, I was trying to uh, look to see any sort of references to the, like who else wrote on, on this particular show. Mm -hmm. So the creator and writer of the show, Girlfriends, Mara Brockacue. Um, mm -hmm. it, like what I found like just really, re like really cool and revolutionary about, you know, the show Girlfriends, especially cause I was like rewatching it now cause it's on Netflix after, you know, watching it when I was like a teenager maybe. <laughs> and like not knowing shit. Um, but apparently like a lot of just like big names were on that show in terms of writers. Like Kenya Barris was one of was like a writer on maybe like a couple of episodes. Mm. And he wrote he created blackish and grownish and mixed mm. ish and all mm. the issues and black AF on, on Netflix. Um I don't know if he got his start on Girlfriends, but just the fact that you know, there was a space for him to, you know, write. Mm. Also, uh, Prentice Penny was, um, I believe, a writer on like a couple of the episodes of Girlfriends as well. And Prentice Penny is the showrunner for Insecure on HBO with Issa. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I just kind of wanted to mention that because, like, she also uh, wrote for The Game, which was a spinoff of Girlfriends. I didn't even know that. Um, yeah, so I was, yeah, I was like, like when I was watching the series, I was like, oh, I didn't know it was a spin off. That's crazy. So it was a spin off of Girlfriends. So she wrote, I don't know if she wrote all the seasons, but she definitely wrote a lot of the for a while. And then she also wrote Being Mary Jane on BET. She was like the creator of that too. Really? Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> but I was like, holy shit. Like, so she's just been around like this whole time. <laughs> Like wow. I knew she wrote girlfriends for sure, but I didn't know. And I guess I guess the game, but I didn't know she wrote like for that. But yeah, it's just kind of cool to see, you know, like humble beginnings for some people who are, you know, like big and bad right now. Like, well, no, like not bad in a bad way, but bad in a good way. Mm -hmm. you know, like Prentice Penny on Insecure, and you know Kenya Barris. And I'm sure there was a lot of others. Those are just the top two that come to mind. Oh, wow. Mm. That's awesome. That's yeah. good. Like, the game. Like, I, don't get me wrong. I watched Girlfriends growing up because that was, like, the one show my stepsister. I don't even call it my stepsister. My sister, that's what she put right. on BET before we all went to bed. We watched Girlfriends. I'm like, oh. But then again, the story itself, it was very intriguing. I'm like, Okay, I like the story behind it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I like the little love affairs that's going on in, and like how no matter what happens, you know, they still all came together and helped each other out. Like that's awesome. What mm -hmm. is like from rewatching it now as like you know as an older adult? One of one of the things I found interesting was um the the the, the dude um William. Yeah. He's a black Republican in the show. I don't know if he is in real life. I don't think so. But he played like a black Republican, which I thought was like kind of entertaining. Wow. Because A, you don't really see that. And B, you wouldn't be thinking of that like in the year 2000. And, you know, his character is very like political. I don't say like political, but like, you know, he's very American. He's like very proud to be an American, mm. <laughs> which, mm. I, which I found to be really interesting. But, but yeah. Oh wow! But it was just cool that you know, like she she wrote that she created that character and put you know that character into the show. Mm. Cause like it does bring like, even though it's not like he's just out here being an obnoxious Republican political person. Cause you know he plays a lawyer in the show, and you know so does um Tracy Ellis Ross's character as well. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just kind of interesting to know that like he has like a mug in his room that has like the the Republican elephant on it, like. Ah, there we go. Context clues. Yeah, just like little things to show, and like he he's mentioned it. He says like, I forgot what he said, but he was like thinking of like trying. He was like picturing like his perfect woman. He was like, or even worse, a Democrat or something. Like like he doesn't yeah. want to be a Democrat. Wow. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Ouch. Very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Kobe. Round back, two. Back to me. Yeah. Um, 
am I going to continue on this trend? Because I, a lot of the people I had were sort of people that I knew who were doing a lot of stuff in science, tech, and slash academia, um, especially academia, because usually people don't hear about a lot of them. Um, so let me see if I can find Homeboy. I think he retired, but the director of NIST, for those who don't know, the National Institute for Standards and Technology, they basically decide everything US related in terms of standards, whether it's from units. So like they have equipment and things that will literally measure like this thing is how long a foot is. And think of all, all the other imperial units, <clears throat> um, I guess like gallons and whatever. And so they kind of are in charge of all those units. More importantly, in the 21st century, they have a lot of cybersecurity work to make standards, um, cybersecurity standards and whatever else is relevant for the more modern day. So NIST, let me see. Okay, so they're a non-regulatory agency of the Department of Commerce. Okay, I actually didn't know what, what department they're under. But importantly, um, the director of NIST was a guy named Dr. Willie Mays. I have to see if he's still there. Um, I think he retired. But there was an article See, I don't remember if I can if I'll find it, but he was a professor, I think. Well, first of all, like he's black. He's um was he did he get his so he did a PhD in analytical chemistry from the University of Maryland. So not my school, but the big college park that most people would know from Maryland, the Terps, the, the turtles, you know. Um mm -hmm. yeah. And so he worked in this, and I guess he just kept his, working his way up and up and up and up, just doing his thing. Um, and then next thing you know, he ended up becoming the director, May 2015 to January 2017. Because I remember I was in college, yeah, when he became the director. Um, and he resigned. He was permanently appointed. Okay, so he was actually appointed and confirmed, right? Because if you're the director of NIST, that's like a confirmed position. Um, and then he resigned in 2017, I guess at the end of the Obama administration. I don't know how that ended up happening completely, but the point is he was, you know, he was doing his thing, Dr. Willie May. Um, it was cool to see this guy, like big black smiling, just he's there and who would have known he was the first black director. Um, and I mean, it's not just like a government agency, but that's like very big in science. Like a lot of people who've done like science engineering internships like they've done stuff and this talking about data metadata cybersecurity like i mentioned the um the national let's see if i can find the name of it there was some uh, institute under nist that um that my own company i remember operates it's like an ffrdc um so a federally funded research development center i, I think it's called the national cybersecurity center of excellence um, I can't find it, but whatever. So NIST has a pretty big purview. Um, and here we are with that guy. So I thought that was pretty cool that he was the leader of it. Um, there was a guy that I don't remember his name, unfortunately, but he was a black PhD in mathematics from my university, my same program, the first year of my program. So I think he would have entered my school like 1984 um, or something. I can't remember the years off the top of my head. But um, the point is, he was a PhD and he worked at NSA. And the NSA is actually the number one employer of mathematicians, which I didn't know before, but they're the biggest, like if you're a math person, the NSA is actually the largest body of I guess, employing math people. And so this guy was, I think his name was like Ahmad um, or Ahmad Ridley. I think his name was Ahmad Ridley. Um, and so I thought that was also cool. Again, you're not gonna necessarily see, yeah, here he is, Dr. Ahmad Ridley. Um, I don't see much about him except that there's just a picture inside of the NSA image gallery. Um, I can't really find much in terms of news, but it's just cool to see these people here who like have good relations and they're helping bring up the next generation of people. I mean, this guy is like, he loves his math. He always talks about these cups, like stacking cups, I guess kind of like Towers of Hanoi type stuff <laughs> or just cup stacking games. And it's interesting to see people and their mind work. And it's just very diverse, like not just racially, but the way people have different careers and they think, and it was just interesting to meet a lot of these people and see, Hey, you don't necessarily have to go in this direction. You can do this. You can be a professor. You can work in defense. You can work wherever you can have your own company if you really want. Um, 
So Ahmad Ridley and Willie Mays were two people in, I guess, the government technical space um, who were sort of the, I don't know if Ahmad was the first, but, you know, he was a guy who was visible and very active in helping out the community back at UMBC and yeah. I'm sure the greater Baltimore region. <clears throat> right. Awesome. Awesome. So, back. yeah, Bat Noir sh showed up and whatnot. So, I want to want to switch gears just just a little bit, just a little bit, because while everybody was talking, I was just doing some stupid around. So, I just found out recently somebody in the music department just died not too long ago. Oh, but, oh right. But this person was very, very, um, hasn't really been talked about. Has not been talked about. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Henceforth. Yes. <laughs> <My man. laughs> This for that, but no. So, how many people know who Charlie Pryor was or is? Mm. Charlie Pryor. Charlie Charlie Pride. Charlie Pride. No, I don't know. Charlie Pride. Okay, so <clears throat> just doing some background. Charlie Pride, and and and, and I got the link in the description box below, so y'all can do do the researching yourself. But Charlie Pride was one of the very few black country music stars back in his time hmm. also he was the second the second black um country artist to be inducted into the grand old opry which is like huge for like country music period okay so he got inducted in there and whatnot and he basically he grew up during the during the times of the, the 30s, the 30s and the 40s. And so where, you know, black folks who, who were just now getting into in the music, in the music industry, it was like, it was still a, it was still like a, um, a barrier for them. But no, he made it in there. Like his, one of his CDs, well, one of his songs, I should say, is the snakes crawl at night a lot atlantic coastal line and he recorded that one to rca rec to rca records and of course he got signed and then that's when he officially released snakes call at night in january of 1966 and then his third single just between me and you another country song that's the one that launched them into like the U.S. country chart. So he placed number nine back in '66. So that, and again, for for a black country artist, that's huge. <clears throat> that is huge. Plus, the following year, 1967, he actually won a Grammy for that song. And then two years later, he hit number one. With all I have to offer, that song he went to that one, and then he had another hit. Is anybody going to stand? Is anybody going to San Antonio or San Antonio and kiss an angel good morning? And so, over his career, he's had 36 number one hits. Whoa. 30. Mm. Number one hit. Wow, that is a large as amount a, of hits. <laughs> yes, as a black country singer, you know, and he just died last. He just died last year of COVID. Oh, wait a second. Mm -hmm. I didn't miss this. That was Charlie Pride. Charlie Pride. Like I said, I got the link in the description box below, so you guys are able to to check him out. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking at him now. I mean, yeah, he lived pretty long. He was 86. Yeah, I mean, he was born in 1934. Mm. Goodness gracious! Yeah, 
The thing about it, if it weren't for COVID, he'd, he'd be alive and kicking probably. Oh, yeah. But even but even still, I mean, when, when, when you think about country music stars and whatnot, especially black country music stars, you, you don't really hear a whole lot. I mean, of course, as of right now, we got Darius Rucker. That's the only one I can think of as of right now, who's a black country music star. I mean, there's probably more out there, but his, but just him alone, you know, he's had a bunch of hits, you know, a bunch of hits. And even when he first started, he made a big splash, like, whoa, like we got a black guy singing country? Like, okay, Darius, we'll, we'll, we'll see how you do. But even then, like, he just, it almost seems as though, like, he blew up overnight. I'm like... All right, if I have to listen to country, I'm listening to Darius Rucker. Yes. I mean, there are a good amount of black people who listen to country, though. Like, yeah. I remember when I went to school, when I was up in school in Tallahassee, which is the real south of Florida. <laughs> the south is the north. Um, the south. The north is the south. So, yeah, so when I was up in North Florida in Tallahassee, you know, meeting just like some black locals who were like legit country south. Like a lot of them like country. Like a lot of them will just be rocking out, jamming out to country. Yeah. I mean I, I, I'll put it to y'all like this. When I was working in the bank out in, in Colorado, like that was like the only station we listened to. And I'm like, okay, cool, no what no, whatever. But it seemed like like Every so often, there'll be a song that will come on, and I will find myself singing it. You know, I'm like, right. what? But then they got to thinking about it like, that's actually pretty clever. Like, okay. You know, and then like, for, for St. Patrick's Day, you know, just, just because I just went, they, they were, there was a, a, a club downtown Colorado Springs called, called Cowboys. Mm-hmm. I went in there you know, still dressed, still I still had all like my my green uh suit on just went in just went into the just went into the bar and I, I got like love. I'm like, they're like, bro, we like your suit. That's awesome. I'm like, okay, I just came here to check things out. And it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. They had a a huge dance floor that people danced around in. I'm like, my black tail is not getting on that floor because I will make a monkey out of me in this okay. suit. Nah, nah. <laughs> but, but it was cool because I got a lot of love. Like a lot of people came in there, cowboy hats, shoes, the whole nine, you know. And they're like, you know, hey, you think about coming back again, man? We're like, we like your suit, but is there a way you can come back in without a suit on? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was St. Patrick's Day. I had nothing else green but the suit. I'm not trying to get pinched. So, yeah. <laughs> that explains the green suit. I thought it was like the green suit of I had to wear that at your bank job or something. No, it, it was it was for it was, really for it was literally for St. Patrick's Day, and we we're all trying to we all were, were thinking about hey, we're school, you know, have a good time. Like, okay, cool. I've never been, but you know, whatever. First time for everything. Right. Exactly. You know? But but then again, I kind of felt awkward until like after I was leaving because it, it wasn't a whole lot of, of, of black folks in there. But as I was leaving, you know, people was like, hey, you was just in there? Like, yeah. They're like, really? Yeah. How is it? Like, it's a country bar, you know? Mind you, this is all pre-COVID now. It's like it's a country yeah. bar. Yeah, mm. tables. I mean, I played pool. I shot like a few games of pool there, you know, and had a blast, you know. And it was like cool, you know. Got my fifteen minutes of fame, man. I was out. But yeah, <laughs> but, but, but but more and more, I was seeing a lot more black people coming into that bar. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, so let's, let's let's support country artists, and you know, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. That was so, yeah. it. Charlie Pride. <laughs> I need to look more um more about him and some of the songs that he had. But that is wow. Yeah. I mean I would say to play one of his songs, but I know how YouTube gets. 
True. Because you like, like listen, you two, if you was not on that gank, I would have <laughs> I would have done it. I would have done it a long time ago. But but you two, you 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 on that extra, extra. Extra, yeah. extra. And especially since he died pretty recently, I'm sure YouTube is even more like gung ho about it. Oh, okay. You're talking about the copyrights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the copyright thing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No one's actually watching the videos clearly. <laughs> it's just YouTube's like, oh, this music was in your so in your video, so we automatically think you're trying to own it. Like, no, like we was using it for, you know. I could pop. I could probably do it. Hold on. But you have to write that whole long copyright thing. That's that's okay. But guess okay. what? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna make you two think harder about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna over make the, you over the music. We should just scream. We don't own this. We don't own this. Facts. <laughs> Remix. We <laughs> okay. I'm trying to do like the. It's like doing like the watermark, but with music. <laughs> music, right? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It should really just be like more common. Like when you, like, when you have images, right? They have watermarks, like you said. When you use like, like, there's a lot of things that like if you have a software thing and you want to like get a license and you can make derivatives usually pretty easily based off of what it is or like an OS. So it's like, why can't there just be an easy way that when you make a video, you just like insert this. And the rights are automatically given to them. Like it's just an automatic thing that you can insert. Instead, okay, more grants. Go ahead. Go on. I'm sorry. No, I'm just, I'm what just... TikTok does. Well, I guess TikTok has like the person has actually the name of the song and the artist that. Mm. Yeah. The yeah. When you use the sound, TikTok right. would be interesting. Kind of like what MTV was trying to do a couple of years ago, but I don't know if they're still doing it. Oh, yeah, I've never. I thought that was never. smart. That was a good way to. Incorporate music into their television. Mm. It's, it's called MTV. Yeah, I was never hip to MTV enough like that. Like yeah. I never watched it. No one in my family, as far as I know, watched it either. I didn't really watch it much either, but occasionally when I would catch it, um, like they would, it would always just be like reality TV shows. But then one day, I happened to see like they were playing a reality TV show and had some music and then I had like the name of the artist and, and the name of the song like at the bottom. I was like, oh cool, you're trying to incorporate music finally. Mm. Mm. Uh black punk in portal punk bands. No bat. No. No, yeah, I'm not a hip punk. Or I'm really not. Um yeah, it's out of my out of my purview. I know so, that's a party, but like that's like a UK band. Um, hmm. That's not really like early though. Oh, best believe though, when it oh, comes no. to music, there will be. We will get to. I'm, I'm gonna have to save that for when we do like a deeper dive into music, um, in terms of black origins of a lot of music and little known black figures in music. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, YouTube, listen, I'm disclaiming right now, we do not own the rights to this man's song. We're just using this for educational purposes only to give credit. Right. Credit is due, and I will make sure I will put it in the description box below. But for everybody else that is here watching, preview of Charlie Pride, this song that I'm getting ready to play is... Is anybody going to San Antonio? That this is gonna be one of his songs. Is anybody going to San Antonio? 
It's Arizona. The place is all I can fall beside. Yeah, that that right there was Charlie Pride. That's a vibe. Cool. That's Charlie. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm stream some of his stuff after. I'm gonna have to just. I mean, I don't even listen to country like that. Um, I'm gonna rock out country out. <laughs> I'm gonna country out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, but still, you know, and and again, it, it's just it's just one of those things where it's like you, you really don't think about as much, but once you kind of do, it's like, holy crap! Like this man was actually pretty good. Like, sweet, you know. Mm -hmm. awesome. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Who else? Who else we got? Go, 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 go. Who's next? Um, hey, hip hop Harry. <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the the who's next thing, all right? No. Oh snap! Hold not, on. Not that I. Not that I know of. I don't think so. Uh, okay, hold on. Um, this is very important. Very important. Like extremely important. Um. Let's see if I can get this thing to play. Well, okay, we don't own whatever the heck the song is either, YouTube, so leave us alone. Is it playing? Uh, barely. That's not good. I don't know if there's a way that it gets incorporated into the actual. Like, I don't know how you're able to play it so loud, unless you have an external device that you're yeah. using. Yeah, I was using my my the camera. It has a um a microphone. Oh shoot! Yeah, this will be difficult because I don't really have. Well, actually, it might not be as difficult. Um, it's it's gonna be a whole lot though. If I really am like, gonna try to try to find it, um. Let me see. Oh, that's that's too complicated. It's fine. I'm gonna maybe drop a link. I'm oh, just kidding. Links don't drop into these chats. But oh, that's unfortunate. So I'm not sure how to get this thing on. Um, what else though? Aside from that. I, because you were talking about um, country, and mm -hmm. then I don't remember if you had mentioned something else. Oh, um, someone else you wanted to bring up before I, because I mean I have another person who's also pretty big that I could mention. Um, there's actually a lot of people that could be mentioned, but um, I just wanted to give space in case anyone had any other shout-outs for modern figures. Um, I mean, you could, you could go. Okie duke. <laughs> like, I was... No speakers. Was like, it's one of those things where it's like, <laughs> no speakers in the big ass church. Oh, no, not yet. Not yet. Give, give, give Toby like two years. He got you, baby. Right. Actually, that's why I was supposed to bring up that I'm making modern, I'm a modern figure making history with the largest fridge I'm making. <laughs> this is a world record. I'm gonna get the Guinness people by my apartment any day now. Here we go. So, something like this, yeah. Boop. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what's going on? What's going on? What's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're trying to touch a refrigerator to, to get it to speak. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because if I can't get it to play very loudly, on here, which actually makes sense why it doesn't actually make that much sense because I'm wearing the headphones, the music should be coming from here anyway, but whatever. I'm not an audio person really. Uh, screw it. I'm just gonna have to like project. Um oh nice. Yeah, <laughs> yes, Matt. So now we got three things going on. Neck pillow, 
I forgot what Ron we told him that he needed. Um, no, internet is good. It was it was my internet. Oh, yeah. but my right. Internet is good. So, L neck pillow. And yeah. He told me, speaker um, fridge. Yeah, speaker fridge or whatever. <laughs> I'm dead. So we're gonna see if I can get this thing up onto my Bluetooth. But in the meantime, where I went to grad school, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Oldest tech school in the country, founded like 1824 or something. Um, oldest technical institute in the country. And currently the president, Dr. Sherlin Ann Jackson. I mentioned her briefly last time, but she was the first, I believe, black woman to get a PhD in theoretical physics from MIT. So that's pretty hardcore. Um, she worked at Bell Labs. So that's like a really, really historical sort of like when it comes to computer science development, it was a really big industry and she helped invent or basically invented caller ID and call waiting and I'm sure there's other things so like literally our phones you know especially like handheld phones or sorry household landlines there we go you know whenever you can see that person you know that's kind of where the technology came from both the ID, caller ID but also the actual hey call waiting you know you have a call and someone's on the other line um when you're on the phone. So she's still the president. She's actually the most paid university president in the country. What? Maybe even like historically. Um, That's awesome. So yeah, and she actually had a higher position than like Dr. Like Dr. Bowski and her, I'm sure are friends, but like when it came to like President Obama and like the like councils on science, she was like pretty high up there. So let me actually look up Shirley Ann Jackson. She was Obama appointed Dr. Jackson as co-chair of the President's Intelligence, um, President's Intelligence Advisory Board. It full, yeah, and she served on the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, um, and she, yeah, she served on all of these things, on all these boards. Chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, 1995 to 1999, um. Wow, there's a lot of stuff with Department of Energy, with some stuff with the NIH. Wow, like she's been everywhere, and I mean she's got she's had other offers, but like RPI wanted her so badly, so that's why they raised her pre her. She raised her. They raised her basically her salary. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there's just all this stuff, and she's had 55 honorary doctoral degrees. Wow. And so I remember she talked about um, she's talked about this bunch, a bunch before, like kind of like in some personal moments where she would talk about how like you know she faced discrimination when she was you know none of the basically students wanted to study with her as a black woman back in the so I'm trying to see what year she got her PhD. I assume it was 1970 something, um, or actually it may have been later, but hey Matt. To be pretty easy to find. I don't know why it's not showing. Hey, Skidmore. Appreciate Matt you. Skidmore. Matt, <laughs> up, buddy? Matt Skidmore show. Yes. You must if you're not subscribed already, subscribe. There's some great updates. And this <laughs> man work this man works hard. <laughs> yes. I can't, I can't find the year, but I'm sure I'll find when Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson got her PhD. Um she got the National Medal of, what is this? The National Medal of Science. Yeah, so that's a pretty big one. So, I mean, yeah, that's great. I mean, she was, you know, my president. I don't remember if I really personally, personally met her, but I've been at events, you know, similar events. And so it's just really cool to see people, like, who are just so high up, especially because my life, I feel like, was geared towards acad academia. Like, my dad. And I, I can shout out my dad. I mean, he... Hmm. Got a PhD in energy physics from a university in France that I do not know. Um, I don't know so much about the history in terms of how many black people had been through. I mean, this was 19, Lord knows. This had to have been 1990 something, early 90s, because I was born in 95. And I'm pretty sure my dad was working on his PhD while my siblings were hey. alive. Hello. What's up? What's up? Appreciate you. We 
<laughs> yes. You. And uh, yeah, it showed, it showed up regularly. Oh, because it's on its online. Yeah, I remember last time it was like something like this. And I was, I was yeah. like, what is, this? <laughs> what is this thing? Um, no, nah, but it's all it's all good. It's like it's just a, I feel like a lot of my influence. Like I was always really into math and whatever. Like that was kind of like my saving grace, to be honest. Um, and so I was always kind of enthralled by a lot of these people. I mean, I didn't know some of them so much when I was growing up, even in college. I mean, obviously, I knew my university president when I got to college. But even Dr. Jackson, I didn't really know so much who she was when I applied to go to grad school. So it was just cool to like as I went through life um, and going through my academic journey and whatever. It's like, oh, snap, look at these people and the great things that they've done. Um, and since I we mentioned the term modern figures, I have to mention the modern figures podcast, which um let me actually so it's a little oh, called Mo oh, you better come on, Toby, bring that heat. What are you talking about? Come on. You said oh. modern figures podcast, bring that heat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's not me, it's not my own, I can't claim, but it was started by so I'm just gonna go to the website right now. Go um, for it. Yo, while you do that, I'll be right back. Yeah. Essentially, it's elevating the voices of um, black women in computing in particular. So I was always kind of into like those computing networks. Like I felt like I was very much on the side. All these great people are doing great, amazing things. Like I know PhDs in computer engineering in like MIT. Clemson's a big school. University of Florida is actually the biggest concentration of black um, computing. Actually, really? I will bring this up. So yeah, UF is, and I think it's Gainesville. So mm -hmm. I mean, boom, right there. Yeah, um, was that you said? Sorry, I went to their rival school, so mm -hmm. I, I can't say positive things about UF. <laughs> <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Rivalries are rivalries, and Clemson, of course, in South Carolina. Again, to Dr. Johnson. Um, so South Carolina has a. I mean, they a lot of. So okay, I should. Go back to the beginning, Dr. Juan Gilbert. And he also was a guy who, I mean, he's a trailblazer when it comes to, so he's the director, I think, of the College of Computing at University of Florida. So he's the chair, um, Computer and Information Science and Engineering, CISE, right? C-I-S-E. If you're from the DMV, <laughs> you've heard that, <laughs> the CISE as, um, as a slang word, like gas me up. So I'm going to CISE up CISE and Dr. Gilbert and look at his Wikipedia real quick because so he's a huge advocate of diversity in computing sciences. Like I, I'll put myself out there and be like, I was very active in a lot of these sort of diversity networks, which again, that deserves its own conversation outside of not just black history, but like what is diversity? What's the point of diversity in the modern era in this 21st century? What's the point of diversity, especially when it comes to like academia and professional world? What's the goal? because it can be a very sort of like, unfortunately it's become a political and cultural issue. Like Trump had his executive order talking about limiting stuff about certain diversity initiatives and certain things that can't be taught on, I guess in federal, when it comes to federal um, agencies, but also it was affecting like actual corporate America. So I think at some point we'll go deeper into diversity, but the point is Dr. Um, Gilbert, um, you know, he was a huge advocate of this diversity. He was at universe. I think he was at Clemson, right? He, he got the presidential endowed chair, but then he moved basically to UF. And then when he moved to UF, that also moved like the entire department. A lot of the PhDs and people under him, especially the black students came with him. And Clemson had 10% uh, had ten percent African-American computer science professors and 10% African-American PhD computer science students in the whole US. Just there at University of Florida. Well, I should say at Clemson, but now he's in Florida. And he got his PhD in University of Cincinnati in Ohio. So Juan Gilbert, I know he met Obama. I can't really find... Um, um, okay, so it looks like he got an honor maybe in 2011 or something. Mm -hmm. um, so there's like a lot of these kind of like people who have been like just doing their stuff um <laughs> i'm actually on the wikipedia page it said this bio is written like a resume please help improve it by revising it to be neutral and encyclopedic <laughs> i've never seen that tagline on wikipedia before um so that's actually kind of funny because like 
uh, a lot of us in these fields, you know, we're very like into resumes and CVs and LinkedIn profiles. So it's hilarious that this is, um, yes, a hundred percent. Very, very good. I mean, I was trying to post some stuff in the chat, but that was not working out very well. So I'm going to have to tweet um, and like, you know, tag McCoy or quote tweet McCoy. And I'll find the Twitter handles too, if I can. So these are just some great people. Um, you know, I, I'm biased, of course, towards like the tech and the math field. And I've always been very interested in like diversity and computing since kind of, it was kind of an accident when I was in college. I would go into the story more later, but like, I was just trying to do research to like get experience when I wanted to go to grad school. Next thing you know, I found like some of these research programs, especially meant for um, diversity, like basically people from underrepresented backgrounds. And then next thing you know, I was at conferences presenting research and like posters and then oral presentations and doing all this stuff. And then I was able to find sort of these networks of like, Blacks and computing, or it might just be diversity in computing more broadly, which mm -hmm. includes much more than race, way more than race. Talks about disability, gender, um, even LGBT in computing. I didn't know there was like a, a basically a push for that. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting seeing these types of things and who are those people who are trailblazers. So I will tweet out Juan Gilbert at University of Florida, Kyla McMullen. Um, she was one of the co-founders of the Modern Figures podcast. She got a PhD, I believe, in computer engineering. I have to double check, but she got her PhD um, from University of Michigan, and she does stuff Ooh. with human-centered computing. So she yeah. got a, she's the first and currently the only woman of color to get a PhD in computer science and engineering from University of Michigan. Yeah. She's a, she's a, a tenure-track faculty at University of Florida's SICE yeah. computer. Hey, she came from the big house. She came from the big house. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now Kyla is great people. Like, um, I've met her a few times. I've been to the conferences that she's helped run. I would have been last year in August, but obviously we know what happened. Um that cough cough, but you know, we're not gonna talk about we're not gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about the C word. Um <laughs> and this year, God knows what's gonna happen. And so I should actually get back in touch with some of those people because mm -hmm. some of them actually just got their PhD like during the pandemic and it was kind of crazy to watch. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And usually they're the first, unless you're in Florida or, or Clemson, then you're not the first. <laughs> but like many universities, you could very well find yourself the first and the only black PhD graduate. And at some point it gets so narrow. It was funny because Dr. Gilbert was presenting statistics about how like diversity in these fields is like trash. The numbers basically stay the same, even though the numbers get bigger, the percentages don't get bigger. Um, and he was saying that when you look at some of these like survey data, you can sort of like look at the tables of gender, race, and look at the number of people from any given school who graduated, and you see like one in one year, and you're like, oh, that's Jared, you know, and that's not good, like because these types of social science research and data are not supposed to be anonymous, right? Whenever you get collect all these things, and you're trying to like get certain um, surveys to go through a period of time, you're not supposed to know who these people are, but because there's such a, <laughs> a short amount of these academics, it's just like, yeah, I can tell who the one black woman who graduated from Arizona this year was. Um, mm. And so it's interesting. And I mean, again, this will deserve its own convo because I have mixed feelings about, like I, I'm pro diversity and pro like these initiatives, but I'm also like, very aware that there's only 13% of us in this country and there's like a million different fields and people are going to be spread across millions of fields. So That's if true. there's only a few people in tech versus black lawyers or medicine, and you're trying to push people into these fields because you want to bring people's experiences from the communities and cultures so they can be better doctors. And so you have better maternity mortality rates, infant mortality rates, or better like practices in law. Of course it's good, but I'm not too like mad and upset if, if one field is not as expansive because, you know, people are being encouraged to go everywhere, be entrepreneurs, do everything. Um, so I've talked for a good amount on my soapbox, but I think just whenever I look and just see these, I'm like, these are really modern figures in the truest form. And you, they don't always get the most fanfare and praise, but it takes, heck of a lot of work to get a PhD or an MD PhD 
I have a friend of mine actually just got his pharm pharmacy degree from Howard University. So nice. now he's a, a doctor in um, pharmacy. And again, during the pandemic, we graduated college together. Um, and it's just it's just great to see like these people succeeding and they're just like starting their journey. I mean, they may not all be the first, but they're very much, there's a shortage, you know? And so the more people that come in and bring their experience, the better maybe they can interact with certain patients from communities that they can relate to because, you know, there's sometimes some mistrust of these systems. And again, yeah. we will talk very much, <laughs> we will talk about the vaccine. That's gonna be a huge one. Um, and how different communities have been responding to the vaccine. Mm -hmm. But I kind of just use this as a point to emphasize why this kind of stuff is important because there are real world consequences. Um, and it's important to have more trust in certain communities that trust has been sort of eroded over decades. Sure. So the modern figures and the people who are trailblazing, the last person I'll mention here is Kizzy Corbett, who basically developed the vaccine. She yeah. led, yeah. she met, she, she led the lab. Um, his Mechia, his Mechia. Um, yeah, great. I mean, she's so young, 1986. My God, what? she's only 11 years older than me. And she's, I believe she's an MD, PhD, or she actually might just be a PhD. Um, just, I mean, it's a freaking amazing feat. And she did um, her degree in immunology. So, microbiology and immunology. And she was the team that developed the COVID vaccine. She's been working on this stuff for decades already, which is why it all happened so fast because a lot of the research in mRNA and everything has been going on. So black women in charge and Fauci used that as a selling point to say, hey, black people, I mean, <laughs> you have to be tactful how you do these things, but black people, you don't have, you know, you have this hesitancy, but look, a black woman made this vaccine. And more importantly, like people who really actually care about, you know, their own community. They're not just like, the the bad the big bad government these are people who are from these communities who care and see these numbers and they want the numbers to get better and they're on the front line developing these vaccines and other things so kismekia corbett you go and do your thing um i mean that's insane like i'm, I'm looking at looking her up right now and the fact that she's just 35 like, yeah she's 35 like my goodness Jeez, I, I had no idea. I'll, like, I'm sitting here picturing, I don't know, like a woman in, in like her 50s and 60s. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's something else. Um, it's hey, definitely... hey, so let me see if I can do this in a way that will be good. So I'm trying to share. And I mean, someone else can also talking about whoever but um let me see if i can do this. yeah it's never the prettiest because the way but i'll just put her up here da, 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 da. she developed the vaccine it's pretty mm -hmm. freaking cool <laughs> um yeah so you can look more into her but yeah and she went to my school. So she actually went to UMBC and was in the same Meyerhoff Scholar program. Um, so again, it's kind of like a little bit of personal pride. And Jerome Adams too, but Jerome Adams didn't get as good of a rep. He was the Surgeon General under Trump. And he worked for um, Mike Pence in Indiana before that. He helped push the vaccine initiative. Um, Toby! We... Oh <laughs> no, Toby, where'd you go, buddy? Yeah. Oh, no. like this laptop die. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that is weird. Look, your best bet. There he goes. Oh, yeah, I definitely accidentally clicked the wrong tab and I left. Oh, uh, you know, I always want, I always, I always wonder what would happen. <laughs> like, like, if I just X this out, would it just be gone? Yeah. Like, I typed, I was literally typing Jerome Adams into my tab instead of using the 
other tab I had open. So it literally just went to the next page. And next thing you know, it closed. I was like, yeah, no wonder that was going to freaking happen. Why did I think that was not going to happen? So, excuse me. Is it possible to pin the tab? Can you pin it? Yeah, you can pin it. Let me see. Can you... So. Like. Okay. Okay. I guess this is, this is good. Yeah. Time. Like, I don't really know how this thing works. StreamYard. How does it work? Um. So, I mean, Drone, he did his thing. I don't know how historic, I don't know if he was the first black surgeon general, but like, again, went to my school, he was involved in that field. It's just, you know, you see different people. And of course, you can- I didn't another, like him personally. I, I know some people got on him because of the comment he made about like, you know, Get, do it for your mama and your pop pop. Big mama. <laughs> big bump, big mama, and do it for your pop pop. Um, so he was basically you talking. Have one black person. Like, are you saying on Trump's team? No, I mean, no, 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 no. I'm saying like, like. I mean, I don't know. I. It just he he just wasn't selling it for me. Like he just sounded way too. Raccoon without the R A. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're dropping that. Oh God. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I know that like he mentioned how like he has because I don't know like if he's part Yes. Anything, but I know that he mentioned that he has family, at least in laws, who were like Cuban or who were Dominican, I think. So he was kind of saying how like he actually you did use those words, but I think yeah, the way it came off, he was like I don't know. I mean he got some backlash. He got backlash for different things. Uh, yeah. I so I think he's, a lot So he's but, Dominican? No, no, I don't know if he is. I think that he has in laws. Um let me see. That, but if, why, why would you say that? Like, if you yourself is black, why are you saying that you have black friends, though? Well, like, I, mean, I, guess, know, he, I guess it's a, so pertinent to an extent. I'm sorry. <laughs> he said so. He he mentioned abuela. He's a do it for your abuela. I get that. Okay. Oh, hold on. Oh. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how loud it is, but. Uh, Toby, it's probably okay. playing through your headphones. Oh, yeah, that's probably it. it's because it's playing through your headphones. Oh, and also too, see if there's a when you do your screen share. Yeah. See if there's a um a way for you to share the audio as well. Um, edits. All I can see is well. I'll stop it real quick. Um, I'll click share again. Yeah, and make sure There's, you share audio. This should be a section for this. It says share audio. Okay, follow these steps. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. What do you... Whoa. Okay, there's a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> Yikes. There's like a bunch of steps to follow there, so I'm not going to bore you guys too much. Um Yeah, you should just be able to share your audio. Well, share when you share the, the the screen, it should be like a little tab, kind of close, kind of somewhere down. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I see it there. I see it there. Um, very cool. So you know, I won't harp too much, but I think it's interesting because even when you have diversity, there's mm -hmm. still like it doesn't make you automatically immune to X, Y, Z. Like obviously, you're still a person. You're still you're able to be critiqued on whatever. And I think actually a, a thing I'll mention in passing is that K Daniel Cameron, perfect example, the attorney general in Kentucky. And he's gotten the most backlash you can imagine because of the Breonna Taylor case and sort of the handling of his office with all of that. And I remember he, he actually got elected as the first black Kentucky um, attorney general, but <laughs> there was like, um, a great segment from the Hill Rising. They basically said how like there was no Democrat or liberal applause for how this was such a diverse, you know, candidate, and he won, and he was the first. Because at the end of the day, people care more about ideology, but diversity can sometimes be used in this way if it's good for you. But if it's not, then you kind of sideline it. Um, 
And I mean, I'm not, you know, I think it would be interesting to talk with black conservatives, but like, mm, sure. I don't know who these, where these people are. <laughs> but I do think it would be interesting because like hearing sort of like a lot of them operate more in silence. And you were talking about that, you know, that show or yeah, the show, um, was it Girlfriends? Yeah. Or, yeah. And it is interesting because like I've, you know, had glancing encounters with some, but like, that is diversity, right? It is someone who's doing the first, but you it definitely doesn't get the same coverage. Right. When or same thing with libertarians. There was a guy named Mash Tor. If you've heard of Black Guns Matter, he's a huge Second Amendment advocate, a hardcore libertarian kind of guy, very distrustful of both parties, um, and a lot of things. And he does like gun training courses. He goes into the hood, he goes into different he was here in Boston, I know, sometime last summer after the protests and you know, he tries to get people registered and gun training because there's a lot of black areas that are much more averse and which understandably because of the violence sometimes you see in certain communities. And so there's especially some older black people who really would just rather not do anything with these guns, but it's like, Hey, these are our rights. Let's do it. But you wouldn't really see someone like him showcased probably when it comes to diversity, because you know, his viewpoints are a bit outside of the mainstream in a way. Um, so, Another tangent about how diversity is not always um, an equal opportunity endeavor, I guess, depending I, I, on. I guess, like, when it comes to promoting diversity, and but of course I could be wrong. I mean, I'm just speaking off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. If it's, you know, if you're some, if, you know, if you're like, you know, BIPOC and you're promoting the greater good of society and like, you know, you're on. Like, like Americans as a whole, that's one thing. But if you're just a BIPOC and you're further promoting, um, you know, like white supremacy or, um, you know, just like, you know, just pretty much everything that's already currently going on or, you know, worse, then I don't think you should really get coverage or if you're just like very radical um white i mean right <laughs> <laughs> so i was gonna say like white supremacist um um because like what i'm thinking of is like there's this guy running for governor in michigan um this black dude <laughs> and ronald's shaking his head because i oh uh, yeah we talked to <laughs> yeah, we, like uh, i mentioned him i forget his name but it's not important john uh, john james <laughs> no, 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 john james was the senator no nah, this this fool Name oh, we're talking about someone else. Change or change, however you pronounce his last name. Oh, no, never mind. No, he got that axe already. No. Oh, never mind. I have no idea who this is. Then. <laughs> nope. But, no. but there was there was like this dude. At, it could have started he was running for governor. The black the black conservative. Yeah, yeah like, and he was oh. saying how Black History Month is racist and oh Jesus, <laughs> American History Month. I'm like. Why not just be American history and like what what history are we talking about? Like the reason why Black History Black History Month exists is to <clears throat> shine light on you know Black historical figures in America that are not out of ten times not taught in your schools on you know months that aren't February. So yeah. I mean, I'll put it to you like this: if presidents. Have recognized that no, it should have been a, it should be a, a not not necessarily a week long, but a, a full month long. I mean, just name drop President Gerald R. Ford. You know, if he said, like, yes, Black History Month, Black History Week should be Black History Month because we need to give honor and credit where honor and credit is due. Because had it not been for these men and women from African descent, they would not have helped us get to where we're at now. So Mr. Austin, you running for Michigan governor for 2022, just know you do not get my vote. I don't want you, I, you do not get my support. You ain't even getting my oh. You ain't getting squat for me. You might get a, a, a whole <laughs> chain letter for me. Nah, hmm. nah, nah. Said nah. No. Said nothing. Mm -mm. Dang. Dang. We, we, said, no. 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 Nope. But anyways, 
Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's I think that's like why a lot of these candidates I mean that's what I hope to think. It's probably simply because they're not Democrats. But you know, I would hope to think that the reason why they don't get too much credit or, or light is because, you know, some of the things that they tend to uphold and um how far they tend to go to, you know, just denounce and discredit black people and, you know, try to in a way keep things as they as they are. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, to put succinctly, I know I'm being mad vague. But yeah, diplomatic. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> No, nah, he was being a coon. I'm gonna call him a coon. <laughs> I don't care. I'm gonna call him a coon. You just you you cannot get on Twitter and just say some odd foolishness like that and think you ain't gonna get clapped back. No, right. yeah. no. no, he got ratioed. He got ratioed hard, which was which I'm happy about. Wait, dude, that was a, that was a Black History Month comment. Yeah. yeah. What's the guy's name again? I'm gonna need to look this guy it's, up again. It's Austin C H E N G. He doesn't have a check mark by his name. That's the crazy thing about it. He has no check mark. Oh, right. Name. That's true. Oh, Definitely. this is recent. Like 8,000 followers or something small. I remember that. Oh, my God. This is recent. Like 12 hours ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's running for 2022. Okay, I thought this was someone who was like already in the past. I was like, how did I even hear about him? No. Oh, this uh, guy basically yeah. announced like yesterday. <laughs> I guess this is how he dropped his his how he's running. So like, okay, on, this okay, is- yeah. There's a reason why. Yeah, so th- <laughs> and that's the reason why he got that young symbol on him saying, "Ew, gross." Yes, I put that on there. Ew, how dare you! I see the root. It says black Michigan Republican thirsty for racist support pledges to cancel offensive Black History Month. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Oh no. Oh heck no. 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 <laughs> no. He's a he's a he's a Nigerian American. We cancel. <laughs> we and that explains why all the Nigerian talents in the in the south. So I will not have it. Oh, I will not have it. As they said in um, um, Mbaku said in Black Panther, like no, this is very bad juju. <laughs> very bad juju. Oh. No, I'm not. We are not representing this. Um, absolutely not. And I was actually thinking like earlier this year, like man, I don't really see Nigerian Americans running for. Kind of like how Asian Americans, similarly, you come to this country. My parents were not talking about politics. It, my parents weren't as hardcore of African immigrant parents as some. So, I mean, like, I have family who study, like, psychology, government, different things yeah, that are outside of... Yeah, neurosurgeon. Yeah, we didn't have to be, like, <laughs> the doctor or lawyer or engineer or whatever. Like, we didn't have to <laughs> do these stereotypical, you know, and nothing's wrong with those, obviously. And, I mean, I am a in the science engineering field. And so is my brother. But the point is that like, we weren't going to be politicians. That was not going to be a thing, but it's interesting. Like those kind of parallels. And I was thinking like, man, maybe there should be like, especially our generation, Nigerian American who wants to run for office, but no, not this guy, not, not this guy. This is not what I wanted. God, if you heard my prayers, uh, this ain't it. (laughs) I revoke. (laughs) I revoke this one. (laughs) These are not the modern figures that I want. <laughs> Please. Modern disfigures. I mean, oh, I'm dead. Disfigures. And I mean, I've I thought like it would be good to like hear like legitimate like black conservatives and like other right. people who like I know there's like one person, Angela Stanton Keen, who's running like the Atlanta area, John Lewis. And I think she actually does things in her community, right? Um there was someone who was running for either mayor or something, not Kim Klasik, <laughs> someone else running in Baltimore. Because Kim, mixed feelings about her. <laughs> Ron, you, you don't have, <laughs> you're not impressed either. Um, but there was someone else who actually legitimately was involved in like a church in the Baltimore community. And I think she was trying to run for mayor right around the time that Trump was basically saying that Baltimore is a rat infested city because Elijah Cummings was doing oversight. Um, 
in investigations. And so, of course, Trump had to bash Baltimore and talk about how he should be cleaning it up. But at that time, Baltimore got a lot of spotlight and there were some black Republicans who they weren't defending Trump's comments or Trump at all. But they were trying to say how, like, there are like issues that Democrats don't focus on. And so it would be awesome to really look at what some of these people have to say and try to look at validity in their experience. But unfortunately, we have people like Candace Owens. And if you guys heard, she's seriously taking a look at running for president in 2024. Apparently, she's not even going to be 35 years old. So I don't know what that's about. Um, I mean, if it's if it's the Republican side, they can get away with anything. I mean, Ted Cruz ran for president. He wasn't even born in this country. So. Oh, yeah. I, heard, actually, I don't actually understand how that actually happened, if that's true. Because that He's shouldn't Republican. have happened. He can do whatever he wants. That's actually kind of, like, really dumb. But, like... Um, <laughs> So in that case, maybe Candace will just run and grift a bit and get some money, write some books. Like someone said that America, you can make an industry out of anything. So congrats to her for turning political, like provocateur into an industry. And it's not just her. You could probably find some people who are like for mainstream sure. Dems and leftists and people who really don't have much except Twitter ranting. Um, and I don't know. <laughs> This has gotten to an um, interesting so how place. How old is Candace Owens? So she won't even be 35? In I gotta look it up right now. Really? Um, she's 31. Really? Yeah, she's 31, so she won't be 34 by... um Because her birthday is in April. Wait, her birthday is in April. So she could technically, yeah. <sighs> this will be turning 32 in April. That's will be 32 this April, so then she will be 35 by 30, 2024. So she would just make yeah. it. Then. And it's the same as AOC, but that that blew my mind. I didn't know they were the same age. Um, she's that young? Actually, AOC, if she's 31, that's kind of blowing my mind because I've always thought of her as like 27, 26. Um, yes. Yes, boys. Yes. And uh, <laughs> welcome to the channel. And thank you. Yes. Amanda Gorman for everything. Oh yeah, my gosh, Amanda Gorman, modern figure. Apologies, Amanda Gorman, because you like one of the top people on this list, being the youngest, I think she was the first youth poet laureate, um, laureate. and then um, she may have been the youngest something or other as well. Mm -hmm. I think she was the youngest person to do the, because she's the youngest, um, youth. She was the first youth laureate, but then she also might be the youngest person to, I think, have given the poet address poem. Forget what they call it formally, but whatever the address that she gave was at the inauguration, the inaugural, I guess, poet poem. So she was the youngest to do that. So Amanda Gorman, hats off, one hundred percent. She is the modern figure. Um, will be yes. interesting to see where she goes. Um. Candace Owens, anyway. Um, Nia Turner as well. <laughs> she's yeah. gonna she's running for the house in Ohio. And I mean, of course, she was a big figure in the Bernie Sanders campaign. And it'll be interesting to see what she does. So a lot of people have a lot of respect for her. <laughs> and she actually had an episode on Yang Speaks. Um, it was I didn't finish watching it, but I got pretty good pretty far into it, and it was really interesting to hear them talk. Um so yeah, you got a lot of people who are climbing these ranks and who are going to be making some moves. I think in Boston, the mayor Marty Walsh just became the um. She just became Marty Walsh is going to be if he hasn't already been nominated, or sorry, confirmed as labor secretary. So he was Boston mayor, and the uh, city council president was a black woman. So I think because they're trying to get rid of the special election because they don't want to spend money on a special election, especially in the pandemic. They basically are like, we're just going to skip the special election and give the city council presidency to the mayor. So I think now Boston will have the first black woman mayor, though she'll be acting mayor. But still, like there is some history being made um, in those circles. Okay. So, yeah, I mean... It's interesting because you don't see as... I mean, you have some. You have, of course, Keisha Lance Bottoms. Um, I'm sure she's not the first, but people love her in Atlanta. So it's interesting to see, like, Black women in particular who are mayors. Um, and actually, a bunch of them are on the... the ooh, mayor for a guaranteed income. So since we got to plug that a little bit, um, mm -hmm. I think you have Keisha from Atlanta, you have 
I forgot her name, but I think the mayor of not Oakland, because that's Northern California, but mayor of somewhere in SoCal, Compton, I think. Um, Aja, Aja, um, Aja Brown, she's mm-hmm. a black woman too. So you see a lot of, it's just the youngest, wow, 31 years old, and she's the youngest mayor ever elected in Compton. Mm. Um, Michael Tubbs, of course, he kind of piloted the first pilot of a guaranteed minimum income in some kind of way mm-hmm. at Stockton. Unfortunately, he lost re-election for a variety of factors, but Michael Tubbs is the OG when it comes to guaranteed income and in, in cities. <clears throat> Let's see, what about what's going on in Chicago? Corey Bush. Well, um, St. Louis, I think. Yeah, St. Louis. Yeah. Or at least oh, some part, some part of Michigan. Obviously, sorry, Missouri. Um, no, she's from the Lou. Corey Bush, she's from the Lou. That's um. You do have um, um, Lightfoot. Lori Lightfoot is the mayor of Chicago. So, yeah. and she was the first black woman. Yep. Yup. And so it's cool to see because it's not just like, it's not an accident. I mean, there's all types of diversity for people who are pushing for UBI, but like you do have a lot of these people who are on the front lines of their community, young, relatively young. I mean, Lori Lightfoot, um, I believe she's lesbian. So, I mean, you have people who kind of are on these different margins who are, I mean, she's actually not on the mayor of guaranteed income for Chicago, but a lot of the other cities are. And so you'll see that these people who kind of are like (laughs) people who've had no choice, but to get involved in the community then become like the frontline leaders. Um, Yeah, but feel free to keep it coming in the chat. Um, Because what we're going to do, we are going to do something special tonight. We got, well, yeah, I'm going to say we. We we got something called Black Trivia. And so it's actually, you can play this with the, uh, the Trivia Pursuit, the Master Board that goes along with this. And so we're going to do some trivia for tonight. And, you know, it's all funny games. There, there's no winners, there's no losers, and everything else. Google Calvin Doe's kids, the future difference maker. All right, we got some homework. So. Oh, snap. Kevin Doe? Oh snap! <laughs> what? I, I looked him up, and this guy looks like a freaking boss. He's he's from Sierra Leone, Freetown, and wow, he built his own radio station at the age of thirteen. Nice. Wow. And MIT got impressed by him. <clears throat> that reminds me of another guy, but. Um, you, you can keep going, Ronald, and I'm gonna look something up in the background. Go for it, DJ Focus. So, I got. We're gonna do. We're gonna do five. We're gonna do five. Yeah, we're gonna do five. Nice. Very cool. Yes. And please share because mm-hmm. like we always say, we're learning ourselves. We we know what we know. We know who we know, but there's always so much to uncover. And so oh, yeah. I learned from everyone, um, black, white, anyone who had their own experience and done their own research. I'm always happy to learn. <clears throat> Ooh, I got something for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and totally, this actually lines up with you. Okay. Believe it, believe it or oh boy. not. Oh boy. Okay. Whose autobiography is entitled To Be or Not to Bop? Oh, geez. To Be or Not to Bop? bop? Yeah. Like B O P? Yep. Okay. That sounds like a music thing. Unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah. the, the domain the domain is not my domain. <laughs> Yeah, but, I, but I, get, I get the joke though. though. Um, and don't and, and please try not to Google it. Yeah, don't yeah, no, try I'm not, to Google it. 
I'm not Googling yeah, put, to be it. Put both your hands here. <laughs> <laughs> like, my hands are here. So, yeah. Y'all couldn't see the answer, but that's okay, though. Aha. Hey! It's a reunion again. <laughs> so this time, I think Tom's actually doing his own stream because I saw that there were live channels, but there's still basically everyone here, and I love it. Like Twisted. the pull it, pull it, pull it, yeah, bop, it. like bop, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like bop. I, I figured it was like music bop. Oh, that one, yeah. you know. So it's like to be or not to bop. bop. Yeah, I would have zero idea. Like, so it's music. Can can we? Yeah, what's the, yeah, what's the genre? Like yeah, it, it's music. Uh, is 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 a music artist? He did this, and I did say he. So you got two. Okay. And and this this person was 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 very popular in the jazz community. Hmm. Hold on. I mean, should I just start naming people? <laughs> Louis Armstrong. No, not a little Richard. Not Little Richard. Um, not Louis Armstrong. No. <coughs> uh, <coughs> like Miles Davis? Mm. Close, but not him. Close. Close. Close, but not him. I'm going to drink some of this and see if I can come up with the answer. Get smarter. <laughs> Can't guarantee it, but after tonight, you might be. Or not a jazz person. I was like, that's. No, I don't feel like I was jazz. I don't want to. Like, is is his name like a nickname? No. Well, is his um, go for it. Is his name close to Miles Davis, or is it just someone similar? Someone similar. They're kind of like in the same in that same kind of genre. Music. No, it's not Coltrane. It's not Coltrane. Close again. Is, is he's in that same this person? He's in that same group. Oh, Duke Ellington. Nope, not not. not I, I forgot about Duke Ellington, and so. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I thought it was someone, but I don't think he's jazz. And I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> Who? Just Sammy Davis. Sammy Davis is, is jazz, but no, it's not him. Oh, yes. yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put his initials in the chat. I'm gonna put his initials in the chat. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. uh, That's the initials. Gg. Okay. On the Dg. David. G. You're good. Yeah. Crap. Crap. <laughs> okay. You guys, you guys ready for it? Yes, I do. You guys ready? Okay, I got I'm you. Still... Three, two, one. Busy? Nope. Less yeah, nope. I've never, never heard of that man in my life. Yeah, never would have guessed. This man could have been walking down the street, and I <laughs> what was it Kiki said. This man could be walking down the street, and I wouldn't know who he was. Uh -huh. Sorry yeah. to this man. And, and see, when and, and, and the the thing about him is the the autobiography to be or not to bop. Think of it like bebop. Oh. Be that's true. Cool. <laughs> Is he good? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look familiar either. John yeah. Burke Skills Pie. Wow. From South Carolina, too. <coughs> now, let's see. Mm. Ooh, I got a good one for y'all. Got another good one. Y'all ready for this one? Y'all ready? All right. Good. Who became the first black head coach in the NBA? Oh, shoot. Who became the first black head coach in the NBA? That I do not know. Yeah, I, is, I don't yeah. know anything about sports. Unfortunately, yeah, I'll just put myself out there. I'm also like, nope. No, mm -hmm. no. Would we hear it? Huh? Would we know the name when we hear it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> and, and to give you guys a, another hit, 
he he was also <laughs> around about the hot. What'd you say? And he just sneezed. No, no, I just yeah, I was just coughing. <laughs> okay. He he was also pretty. He was also one of those superstars, roughly around about the same time of of Wilt Chamberlain. Mm. Wilt okay, Chamberlain. I do I do know of him. He, <laughs> like that those 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 eras, like the early early Magic and early, very early Larry Bird, very early. <laughs> oh wow, that's old. And I think, if if I remember correctly, he also played on the same team that Larry Bird played for. Maybe a few years before Larry Bird came. Oh, the Celtics? No, not Dr. J. No, not Oscar Robinson. So he played on the same team. If I'm thinking, because I, I mean, I know here in Boston, right? I remember because we were saying how the best Celtics player um, was Larry Bird. Um, so they were trying to roast Boston, but um, shoot, I wouldn't know because I don't know anything about the city or these teams. Mm-hmm. Initial is going in the chat as of <clears throat> no, wait one second, Baskin Robbins. Like you say these names, and I'm like, I know the names, but I don't know. The team or anything. Baskin, Batman, and Robin. Baskin no. Robbins is that what you said? The Baskin Robbins, <laughs> Batman, and Robin. Said Batman and Robin. Like no, that was that was a video game. Stop it, Toby. Comic book. Wow. Oh, Bill Russell. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yes, yes. I've definitely heard. But yeah, yeah I've heard point, about Bill Russell. Yes. Okay. I mean, actually, I can even imagine. He's the guy like. <clears throat> Let me look him up. What's he even look like? Yeah. Bill Russell came the first yes. one in the NBA. He's still alive. Yeah, wow. 86. LA. Okay. Okay. He playing center for the Celtics. Wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. 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 But that's pretty cool, though. He went ahead and played, and then he became first mm-hmm. black coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sportsman. Okay, right. so we got the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2011. Oh, wow, okay. That's wow. relatively early because I know Obama went on like a sprint <laughs> when it came to those medals in his last, I almost said semester, in his last um, year um, in office. So in 2011, that's pretty cool. Bill Russell. Um, Let's see. Let's do. Let me do. Let's do one more. Let's do one okay. more. I want to do five. Huh? You want to do? Oh, you want to do all? Okay, okay, L. I I got you. Yeah. yeah, I thought we were doing five, or maybe I just imagined that. I don't know. No. Uh, if you want to do five, I got five. Okay. Let's do. Let's do. We'll do another sports one, and then the last two we're gonna do something totally different. Okay, so who was ranked among the top five U.S. tennis players for 13 consecutive years? Who was ranked among the top five U.S. tennis players for thir- top five U.S. tennis players for 13 consecutive years? Serena Williams. No. Here's your- I guess Arthur Ashe. Yeah. Yeah. Arthur Ashe. Arthur Ashe, yes. I know who he is. Wow. I was like, it's either Arthur Ashe, Serena Williams, or Venus Williams. Yikes, I'm showing myself because Lord knows. Okay. (laughs) I did not know. Oh wow, he died relatively young. My goodness. Yeah, he had he had AIDS. Was sad. Uh, I think it was from related. Age related, related. 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 He was married to. Okay, yeah, heart bypass surgery. Whoa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> right, two more. This is going into the to the entertainment section. So. Which are which 
actor slash director, actor and director, was first rejected because of his West Indian accent. Which art, which actor director was first rejected because of his because of his West Indian accent? Do I even know any West Indian? Was it Lindo? Who? Lindo. Lindo. I don't think I know who that is. I like the last name Lindo. What? Oh, Roy Linder. Slash director got rejected because of his West Indian accent. Whoa. Oof. Oof. I actually don't know really any. Oh, I, you, you, you're going to know this one. What, what's right. the name? Uh, what, what's his, what's his initials? Very though? obvious. Well, let's see. He, he starred in A Raisin in the Sun. Ooh. Ooh. Boom! You really? Got it. I didn't yep. know he was West Indian. Yes, he's West Indian. Wait, say his, say his name again. Sydney Poitier. Yeah, Sydney Poitier. Oh, hold on. American, Bahamian. I, I vaguely heard 93 years old and still alive. He's still Whoa. in Miami. What? He's still alive? He's the oldest living and earliest surviving Best Actor Academy Award winner. Whoa. Wow. And he was the first black male and Afro Bahamian actor to win that award. Wow. Why don't I know more about this guy? Well, okay, a lot of his movies were older, but still. Mm -hmm. Just from a historical standpoint, I don't know this man either. Wow. Again, when I again he did raising in the sun. Like he got <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um he he also did um oh it was another one it was another one to sir with love guess who's coming uh, to dinner was famous he had oh, that yeah. one, like football oh. movie he, or, or was it like army movie or the football movie I can't remember which one. Um, let's see if I can find it. I'm looking through his. Yeah, I'm looking at football movie. Well, I searched football movie. I didn't see anything. So let me look up army. It was, it was like an army movie. Interesting. Duel at Diablo. Red Bull Express. Military wiki. Um. <clears throat> Okay, I see some stuff about his real life. He was, apparently was actually in the army in real life for a little bit. But yeah, I have no I idea. Was, I think it was him in this movie. I, I don't know. I can't remember. Sarah Crazy, what's your prior? Good day to die. can't believe he is 93 years old and still living. In Miami. Where was he was born in Miami too. Whoops, I was muted. I was just like, man, I need to watch all these classics. Hey. Or some, maybe, I don't know. Okay. Let's see. Last. Last one. Yep, last one. Last one. They're going to tickle your brain. Okay. Oh so, name a TV series which was developed from a popular. Radio comedy program in the 1930s. Oh, jeez. Name a TV series which was developed from a popular radio comedy program in the 1930s. The radio program was in the 30s? And that was okay. a TV. Name a popular TV series. Yeah, Name we've more. A TV series which was developed from a popular radio comedy program in the 1930s. So this is kind of before. When this is before TVs were actually like a thing, and radios was the main source of entertainment for many households. Popular radio segment. Oh man. I mean, I don't know what radio segments were there. I mean, I could start just naming like <laughs> random shows and hope that one of them was a radio segment. And this is bl black, I'm guessing, though. Mm hmm. No, it's not. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. What was the one I just thought I of? I don't see a radio show. I don't think so. I think it was a different, maybe. I don't know. A different world. No. No. Or what's that? I don't want to say. 
No, I wouldn't be in Living Color with two new. No, what's the what's that one that I was just thinking different of? Strokes. Yeah, there we go. Different Strokes is what I was gonna say. Uh, the, the... Um, I'm trying to find like old, yeah, older shows. Like, like, yeah, this, this is old, old. Yeah, exactly. Old, old. Yeah, this is old, old. What shows existed that were so, so old? This is like the 50s. Like, because if the, if the radio show was in like in the 30s, was it like a soap opera? It was a comedy. It was a comedy show. It was, it was a comedy. comedy. It was comedy. Oh, hold on. I don't know the names, but I, I what remember hearing about. No, I have no idea. Like, I just remember hearing about some old, old comedy yeah. show. Oh, okay. Wow. <clears throat> about oh. Right, exactly. Uh, we stuff from the eighties and nineties. Listen, yeah. I wasn't even I wasn't even born. Like Sanford and Son. No, no, y'all gotta go. Y'all, y'all gotta go. Yeah, way. I, know, that, that's I don't know anything that old. That's the problem. And my yeah. parents didn't watch this stuff because they weren't even in the country. So I'm like, there's a whole just gap of like pre. You could say before I was even born, that was just like history that didn't exist in my family in the U.S. And so we, while we watched some stuff like Cosby Show and Fresh Prince, and like obviously these are way newer, but like um, Family Matters, I don't know much about what was before that because we never really took the time, and no one in our family watched it because no one knows what these things were. So I'm just like, yeah. crap, I don't even know um, what existed way back then. I really could not tell you. Um, not I'm not black side anyway. At least when it comes to like classics, like Gone with the Wind or like I'm Wind, Wind at My Back, <laughs> or like God knows <laughs> Disney movies are old, but what what black things? Goodness. Yeah, from a black comedy radio <laughs> show. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Does anyone want to phone a phone a friend in the comments? Does anyone have? <laughs> <laughs> You get one lifeline. Can you search for Google? Can you search for Google? No, you're not searching Google. No, no Google searching, but if anyone has any ideas, you could throw out some shows that existed back then. Right. Like that would even help. I'm like thinking of like my naked night days. Like, oh no. No, because I at least know that I definitely know it's not like I know like those Nick at night type shows are way too recent, but then like even when it comes to like Different strokes. I have no idea when that was. I have no that idea was when. The 80s. Oh, the different 80s. Different strokes was like. Was different the world. I thought it was older than that. But yeah, yeah. different world is newer. Different world is like late 80s, early 90s. Only reason uh, I remember that one is because <laughs> I used to watch it before I went to school every morning, and that was back in the 90s. Right. A different wow. world was like was was 90s because that was the spinoff of the Cosby Show. Mmm. Yeah. Um. So that that had to be like early nineties, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like late eight, late eighties, early nineties. Yeah. Probably late eighties, early nineties. Um, yeah. Because you got to remember, that's when it, it basically gets spun off when the um the oldest daughter from the Cosby Show when she went to college. Mm-hmm. Lisa Bonet. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, yeah. I don't know what kind of hints you got on this one. Oh. Um, yeah, this one, this one, this one's a shocker for me too, because I I don't even know. So I'm gonna drop the answer in the chat in three, two, one. Oh, what the heck, man! That's true. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have guessed that, but I knew that. Amos and Andy, yes. Yeah. Harlem. Good God. 1951 episode, but the radio was 1928. Mm -hmm. Sheesh. My God, that was even before the freaking Wall Street crash and the Great Depression. Yikes. That's cool. Yeah. So that that is the trivia. But but do do keep in mind starting tomorrow, we're going to the Twitter, the McCoy Twitter page is going to be starting tweeting some, going to be tweeting some of these stuff out. So do the best that you can. Try not to use Google. Try not to use any search engine as much as possible. You know, it's all about funny games. And yeah, and again, we're just going to going to have fun with it. And 
and I find it fitting for, for this month to kind of just do that in, you know, kick knowledge and, and just learn some random facts and whatnot. And so have fun with it. Like I said, check it out first thing. It probably won't be first thing in the morning, but pretty close to it. So that way when you get your morning cup of coffee in or whatever your caffeine beverage you drink to get your day started, boom, there you go. Boom. We're going to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep some tabs on that because Lord knows my Twitter presence is barely existent these days. But let me come on and interact with McCoy um, and everything else going on, and I'm gonna be there and try to show my face and give some answers because I haven't really done trivia in a while like this, really. Um, so this kind of stuff is interesting. Like it, it's like, oh yeah, these are these facts. A lot of things I don't know, but some. Some things you do and Kahoot, that that's an interesting option too. Um, you would need a lot of people though in order to make teams. Right. But... I feel like Kahoot would be too hard though. But <laughs> definitely something yeah. we could try some sometime. <clears throat> yeah, I, I seen um the guy named Berlizzi. He he did Kahoot with with Catch his you, Matt. with his um uh, with his channel, man. That mess right there. Yeah. Boom. Nice. I like that. Yeah, I just thought that and I was like, very cool. I have to go back in time actually onto your channel. Um, because I've seen like episodes here and there from everyone's, you know, everyone's channels who are up on here. Definitely mm -hmm. watched, but it would be interesting to kind of see these things, especially since we are in Black History Month. And we're kind of seeing all these intersections, so I might as well. Um, yeah. Yes, man. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so, it's shoot, okay. get, get get us because we obviously we were on nerds for Yang last. Um, I'm trying to remember if it was. It wasn't it was the like sixth. Yeah, it was the, the very. It was the very end of January, so that was cool. So. Super glad to talk with anyone else. Um, we know that, Boyce, we still have to get you on to talk about being a father of a Black child. That is a very interesting topic. And so, yeah, let's, you know, let's continue to have these. We're having fun, but we also ha can have some conversations that kind of cross over channels and disciplines. And, you know, yeah, bet. You are in a whole different time zone. We appreciate you being here. <laughs> different continent. We love it. <clears throat> yes. Peace. All right. That will, unless anybody has any final thoughts, questions, or anything else. Yay, nay. If not, that will conclude tonight's episode. Stick tuned. For next week's episode, we're going to talk so a lot more. And again, we may be, it's probably going to be doing something different. We don't know yet. But at the same time, when we figure out, you will know. One ah! thing. Oh, snap. <laughs> hey. Yeah. <laughs> it, would, it, would be, it would be an honor, right? Because, of course, I remember Elle was on. Ron, when were you on? Oh, man. I oh, think. Man. Sheesh! Like sometime last year, I think. Okay. Boys, if you can, if if you can remind me, like it was last year. I think we were we were talking about. Um, I think we were just getting this channel started. I, wow. I think we, I think we were around about the same time we were just getting this channel started. That's when I was on. If I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, I, I know I haven't seen it. That's. That's crazy. Like three months from now, essentially, almost four months, you could say we started this. So next, before you know it, we're going to be a year into, we will have like 52. Well, we've done more than an episode a week in the early days, but you, we essentially would have 52 episodes. And you could be like, bro, we hit a year. Yeah. It'd be like um, anime seasons. You said how many anime seasons? Yes. Anime yes. seasons. I'm dead. <laughs> five months ago, yep, that sounds about right. About five months ago. Oh, oh, oh okay, yeah. that was actually more recent. Really? Yeah. Was that like no um, October then? Goodness. 
somewhere around there. I feel like that's when I was on. Was yeah, I was about to say, I thought that you were on like relatively, yeah, like not, not right at the end of the year, but like. Because I know she was, was on there kind of closer to the end. And I remember watching that one because I was at the grocery store when I came on. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm watching that one. <laughs> yes. I have my phone right here in the shopping cart doing my grocery shopping. I'm like, yeah, like look, look at my look at my people go. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I will. Okay. Oh man. Okay. Months ago. Wow, wow, wow. That was a whole different yeah. time. August was. Man. I remember August? Like summer was ending. We were like, well, there goes everything because we knew COVID was gonna right. get back up. I mean, at least here in like the Northeast, it can. Get a little chilly pretty early. Um, we had a few. We had a few warm spots. I remember it was. It was like seventy-five degrees in November. I was like, "What the heck?" I was like, "Summer's making a comeback." <laughs> it, was the, yeah. it, was the, it was the corniest thing, but I was like, "This is like having an entanglement with August <laughs> because." Oh uh, yeah, I remember that. That was fun. I was like, "Yes, yes, yeah, definitely check out the trickle up." Yes. Oh, yeah, it's also a lot of fun. Yeah, okay, cool. I caught, a, I caught a few episodes of that one. Oh yeah, that one. Sheesh. I know that um I was I've seen like some of the posts and everything on the Instagram, right? Like I don't spend a lot, a lot of time on Instagram, but when I'm there, I'm like, oh yeah, trickle up, cool. Um actually, so the one thing I was gonna mention, this was not a history thing, but I'll mention the history thing first. Um, because I remember I got messaged by the trickle up because it was about, I guess, a black comic voice you're gonna have to help me out here but what is the thing you dm'd me about that there was like a showcase of someone who was like an animator or a comic um and apparently they were also a yang person i'm gonna look up the message but there was this i guess watch party it was an urban mixtape um and the guy was named ryan odagawa who I guess is the Yangin guy who's part of the comic book artist world involved. And so I thought that was interesting that there's like this sort of, and I don't want to show on my phone. It's not going to look super pretty. Um, but this account called Real Sway was having a little like listening party. I didn't get to make it because the link actually wasn't working for me to register. But it's interesting to see like more urban comics, urban anime. Like I know there's people who've been trying to like make like, black anime or whatever it sounds so, so familiar i definitely seen that <clears throat> yeah um so that was just like one little cool thing where it's like hey look i mean there this is maybe a little bit more underground but you have people who are making strides trying to like break their way into some of those industries um and creatives of course are like they they like have the most to gain when it comes to stuff like ubi um as we kind of all know but like they do dope stuff now, what the thing I was going to mention, because Valentine's Day is coming up on Sunday, and that is the day that I believe you have to register, and we should actually make a real post about this, but like um, the registration for New York City's mayor, I think the primary, so I don't know about public, whatever, yeah, the Democrat yeah. primary at least, yeah. you, you have to register by the 14th. God knows how you do it. I've looked this thing up. I don't know. I have no idea. Whenever I... I try to like find I mean, the last time I looked it up was a little bit easier, but when I looked it up like a month ago um, or for three weeks ago, it was just like, what the heck? So it, New York city people, I was going to post it um, on my own personal platforms. Tell people, you know, I've been telling people like, yo, whoever you want to support just make sure you're registered by the 14th. Cause you'd be locked out if you're not. And that sucks. New yeah. York should yeah. do a lot better because I know Massachusetts one big thing they're pushing for is they already did automatic voter registration, I think, in 2019. Really? And it came into effect last year, though it's been a bit of it's not been complete. It's not been perfect, but they've been trying to source it. And they're trying to like now recently they're trying to get mail in voting fully expanded. More importantly, they're trying to reduce all the time of registering. So you can do same day registration if you want. So New yeah. York, for whatever reason, is not on top of that. So they lock you up pretty early, February 14th. What? Because the primary is not until June. So make sure you tell people that's less than a week away. That they need to register. Um, yes. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like I actually have no idea what they're... Because I think to register for the general election, you just had to register by like April or May. 
and I'm just like, why would you? I don't know. Parties are weird. Um, better would be to have an open primary, like Chicago recently changed to nonpartisan elections. Um, Florida is, had that on the ballot, but then people didn't vote for it. I was upset. People do. And I know um, Dennis has mentioned this. I know on the stream where you all were talking about the <laughs> should Ding run for New York or do the third party. And he, I remember you guys were stressing open primaries, nonpartisan primaries, um, and of course, ranked choice voting. So got to plug that again. New York, hopefully they can like push more for it. They have New York choice, they have ranked choice, but they don't have the infrastructure to make the elections less of a stranglehold. Um, for the one party, it would be nice if things were easier to register and less restricted, you know. Um, right. mm -hmm. is that deadline's not even publicized. People always talk about the other deadline in like April or whatever, and that's not good <laughs> because you can't make any change if you can't vote in the Dem primary. That sounds I fun. Depending on if I get the vaccine. <clears throat> Shoot. Yeah, if I get the vaccine in time because. You know, like, cause that's that's summer, and my birthday's in the summer, so I really want to be able to be doing shit. There so, you go. so it's like, yes. yeah, I, I would definitely go to New York City with you, boys, in June if I have the vaccine. Agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So I mean, we gotta stack up some money and um, be out. Yeah. But I'm like the least essential. I, I probably like the, like the second yeah. to last in line. Yeah, I think I think you're similar to me, where it's like ah, uh, office worker, young. <laughs> yeah, it's no, like I work no from home. I'm like, you know, I'm capable of working from home. I'm young. I'm healthy. I don't really have. I don't have any underlying health conditions. So <laughs> it's like, what what am I gonna do? My mom's yeah. been vaccinated, so I'm even. Oh, okay, yeah. Even less, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're less worried about transmitting something, you know, to someone right. who's yeah, higher risk. I'm less, you know, and like I'm even further back in line, probably. But I'm sure I'm still in the same place. But... Oh, dope! Mm -hmm. oh, that's super dope. Yeah, I mean, man, yeah, I don't cool. even, I don't even know when I'm. Cause I haven't been to New York in a while. I didn't go for the income March last year or two years ago. Um, I meant to, and that just, it wasn't going to make sense at the time. Um, and then obviously this year, things were different. So last year, things were different. So it would be cool mm -hmm. to make a trip to New York, <clears throat> be my first time there in a while. And I can actually explore, yeah. see, see yeah. the boroughs, see the gang, whoever's there and active. And hopefully enough people will be vaccinated that like, <clears throat> people will start to be able to feel safe going out and things will start to reopen and all that jazz. Wow. And I mean, I getting the vaccines a thing. I mean, I had COVID, but antibodies, I don't know how long those will last. So, and obviously, you know, three months with the, new, with, with the newer months. strains, you know, you're, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a big thing. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Again, that could be another topic for another time and another moment. Oh, That's for sure. Yeah. That being said, y'all, it's time to go to bed. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Dang. The time went by, though. This was... <laughs> time went by fast. So, again, make sure before you guys leave, make sure you give us a thumbs up, um, share, like, subscribe, whatever you got to do. And, and hit that notification bell so that way when we go live the next time you'll be notified so we are out until next week any final thoughts actually yeah i'll play this thing um i'll be i'll be super <laughs> since, since this didn't happen before see ya see ya <laughs>
I'll hit stop, but I, I know that I hit the little checkbox this time. So that is really unfortunate. Um, <laughs> if it's just not sharing because I hit share audio. Um, at that point, I'm just like, I don't know what to do. I'm going to just figure it out. If it doesn't work right now, it, it's just not going to work, and that's fine. <laughs> no. It's not working. Maybe, wow. maybe don't share your screen and just share the audio. Oh, yeah, that's an option, too. Yeah, All right, we're... Go, go. We're gonna get this. Well, you can share a video oh. file, but I don't have that. You can only share your screen, or you can share a file. Oh, you can't just share audio. No, nah, not that I see here. It actually is kind of strange, but whatever. Oh, nope. Just kidding. Nope. It's all good. If you know what it is, just Google the hit, who's next. Um, hip hop Harry. Hip hop Harry. Hip hop Harry. Hip hop Harry. That was a big thing mm -hmm. when. TikTok was blowing up. Yeah, I got y'all. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what it's from. Who's next? Oh, I see you, L. I see you, L. Come on, L. I was like dancing my chair. <laughs> All right, y'all. <Sean. laughs> out of here. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thanks for.